While the allure of beautiful period homes packed with original features may captivate our imaginations, the reality for most of us is residing in builder-grade cookie-cutter homes. While these homes may lack character and originality, there are ways you can add warmth and interest without the architecture doing the heavy lifting for you. From something as simple as choosing the right decor and furniture, all the way to wall paneling, here are my top 12 tips to add character to a cookie cutter home. The term cookie cutter home refers to homes that have been mass produced with little variation, quite like how a cookie cutter creates identical shapes from dough. These homes are usually part of larger suburban developments where every home has been built to the same specifications to streamline construction and reduce cost. It is a one-size-fits-all approach. The same thing also applies to most newly built apartment blocks. There's rarely any feature inside, just an empty white or gray box. But don't fret if you do live in one of these homes. There are numerous ways that you can transform it into a personalized and welcoming space. It ultimately boils down to two things curating and paying attention to details in furnishings, lighting, and decor, or adding in interesting architecture elements that feels right in the space. In short, you need to pay attention to details and make whatever is in the space unique to you, not apply a one-size-fits-all approach. If you have a cookie cutter home and shop in the same 5 to 10 big retailers like West Elm and Target just like everyone else, then you can't be surprised when your spaces all end up looking the exact same way. Challenge yourself to venture beyond the familiar and look for boutique stores, local furniture makers, light designers, and explore the world of secondhand vintage and antique pieces. Just getting one or two of these pieces will instantly infuse your space with character and individuality. But antique pieces alone won't instantly turn a builder grade into a characterful home. Be mindful of the scale and style, as overly ornate pieces can sometimes look awkward in newer homes with small rooms and low ceilings due to their size and very traditional finish. Instead, look for vintage pieces that are visually lighter and slimmer. And if you're on a budget, then be patient and take the time to buy secondhand pieces or even go thrift shopping. There's no need to furnish your whole house in a week or even a month. And for many people, it can take years and that is okay. Remember that this is real life, not a reality TV show. Beyond essentials like your bed, you don't really need to get everything together all at once. Take the time to source pieces that you actually like or ones that will be useful to you, rather than filling empty spaces. Doing this also allows you to curate items that you personally like and make your home unique to you, not a replica of something you see on Pinterest. If you're a bit stuck about where to shop, you can also check out our mega shopping list. We've curated a database that features over 300 stores, many of which are used by leading global designers for their own projects, including places where you can get custom upholstery, furnishings, and window treatments. This is a big one. Always upgrade those builder-grade lights and add more lamps in your home. You can instantly elevate a home from builder-grade to custom with light fixtures alone as they tend to be poor quality, unstylish, or too small in cookie cutter homes. Unlike most decorative pieces, lamps can both look good and functional. Plus, they're easy to incorporate if you decide to move to a new home. So I'm usually inclined to invest more in beautiful lighting. Scandinavians do this particularly well, and most of their homes usually feature plenty of unique lighting, many of which are closer to sculptures than your standard light fixtures. A show-stopping lamp or light fixture can easily draw your attention away from the lack of architectural feature in a room. Also check that there are enough layers of light. In most cases, builder-grade homes only have overhead lighting, but the secret to a cozy atmosphere is having all three layers of light, ambient, task, and accent on top of ceiling lights. Add in unique pendants, sconces, or flush mounts, and also freestanding lamps like floor and table lamps in various places around the room. With lighting alone, you can completely transform the mood and feel of a space. Builder great homes tend to feel really flat. To cut costs, they often put in cheap plastic blinds or totally leave the windows bare. So it's often just window, wall, window, wall, window, and wall. To break this up and add in some softness, I'd suggest installing curtains to filter the natural light and to also emphasize the height and width of your space. For smaller windows, Roman blinds can be a very good option. 
Custom window treatments are best, but they can be pricey. So to save a bit of money, you can buy them off the shelf and hem them so they fit like a custom curtain. Make sure to get them taller and wider than the window and get enough fabric so they look full instead of stretch. You can check out my 5 curtain rules video for a more in-depth guide on this. Curtain is one thing that I really like to incorporate in all of my client projects as it is so easy to do functional and has a massive impact. It doesn't matter whether you have a builder grade home or not, the facelift that drapes can give a space is substantial. You can also take it a step further by automating your curtains, which you can do with the SwitchBot Curtain 3 who is a sponsor of today's video. I love smart devices that make my life easier, and this little robot-like device is a fantastic addition to any curtain. It glides very smoothly, never gets stuck on my hundreds of testing, and they retrofit easily to any existing curtains and tracks. You can open or close your curtains using your phone, a tiny remote that you can leave on your bedside table, talking to a smart speaker, or you can still do it manually by gliding them slightly and letting the robot do the rest. Even better, you can put them on a schedule so they cycle at your preferred times, or set an automation like having them automatically close when the light level outside is low to allow you some privacy inside your home or perhaps the reverse, to protect your furniture against intense sunlight. Installation takes about a minute on my end with the U-Rail curtain track. No tools required. Simply put in and twist the side clamp and lock in the robot to the side clamps. I'm surprised by how easy that is. And yes, it is completely hidden behind the curtain. In case you're wondering, there's also a rod version that works with all kinds of curtain headings. And it also works with various kinds of rails. Setting up with the app is just as easy. Download the app and follow the on-screen instructions. It works straight off with Bluetooth on your phone. If you have plenty of smart home devices like me, the Hub 2 gives you matter support and also allows you to connect to Google and Alex. It also has a temperature, light, and humidity sensor, which is very useful. One of my favorite features is the quiet drift, which makes it completely silent and opens up the curtain at a very slow rate so you can wake up to natural light in a much nicer and gentler way. There's also a solar panel attachment, so you don't have to worry about charging the robot ever. You can check out the SwitchBot Curtain 3 and all its accessories with the link down in the description box below. Thanks to SwitchBot for sponsoring today's video. Original Art has the remarkable ability to transform a mundane home into an elevated space infusing it with personality, sophistication, and style. If you find a specific artwork or artist whose work speaks to you, or that you feel a certain emotion when looking at it, then consider investing in those original pieces. The Affordable Art Fair is a great place to start. I'll definitely give it a go if they have dates in your city, although it's mainly catered to contemporary artworks. Places like Blue Thumb and Sachi Art are also great places to discover relatively affordable original artworks. I'll link down some of my favorite places to get artwork down below. Otherwise, look into thrift shops and secondhand pieces. You can often find great pieces at a bargain. Whatever you do, avoid buying generic artworks just to fill in a blank space. Things like cringy quotes or one of the many generic prints you find in discount stores. They're totally devoid of character and will further detract from the personality of your space, which is already non-existent to begin with. Unfortunately, cookie cutter homes often come with the cheapest paint, which is not always ideal as it is dead flat and has no sheen at all. Developers choose this finish because flat paints hide imperfections really well, and worse, they often go for builder's beige or the dreaded gray without any consideration to the surrounding finishes. Paint is an easy and affordable change which takes up a large area, so it is guaranteed to transform your home. I'd highly encourage you to explore this if you don't like what is currently on your wall. Paint is a typical change, but you can also opt for wallpaper. It doesn't even have to be that bold. You can get subtle neutral wallpaper to add in an interesting visual texture like grass cloth or fabric. If you're worried about how permanent wallpaper can be, consider them in smaller settings like an open nook or guest bathroom. Also consider how you can elevate the curbside appeal of your home through paint. Cookie cutter homes are all painted the same colors like taupe and dark gray. Consider a color that reflects your individual style and make your home a statement from the outside. Doors are especially great to add a splash of color, but make sure it goes well with everything else. Plants are always a great way to elevate a space, even more so in cookie cutter homes. While I'm not personally against fake plants, I do think that real ones are a better choice where possible, 
as they all look different to one another and there are so many easy to care plans to choose from. You can also look into large or oversized statement arrangements in vases. I always like to look for one with branches that have a lot of movement, something with a lot of curve or have elements that branch off. Depending on where you live, you can source real branches from native plants or get some faux branches to style with. Dried branches and flowers are also great as they are 100% natural, but have undergone a treatment to preserve them. You don't just have to focus on the indoors, but also consider how you can enhance your exterior landscape. If you live in an apartment, consider how you can elevate the balconies. I did a Japanese garden in my previous apartment with some decking, rocks, plants, and solar light, and they definitely stand out as far as balconies go. So far, we focus mainly on the visuals, but integrating other sensory elements is just as important. Music and smell are the two easiest things to include and will totally enhance your perception of the space. You can even do this right now. Turn on some music in the background and get a scent for your home. You can even make one on your own using natural ingredients like lemon, vanilla, oranges, and apples. Also consider how you can enhance the whole tactile experience of your home with different textures and materials. Texture is so important in creating a layered and cozy feeling in the home. Think rugs on the floor, curtains, cushions, and blankets. These easily changeable layers don't just absorb sound and add warmth, but they're also an easy way to inject color and pattern. Plus, they give you something beautiful to notice, which detracts from the lack of other architectural features in the room. Remember to also incorporate contrast. So things that are both hard and soft, rough and smooth, matte and glossy, warm and cool, or coarse and fine. Not only will that add tactile texture, but visual texture and interest to your space. If you're having trouble with this, check out our decorating checklist which you can access for free in the description below. Tick the boxes as you're decorating to help improve the look and feel of your home. Custom joinery can be quite expensive, so if this isn't in your budget, I'll suggest DIYing it with modular IKEA units like the popular Besta range, Method kitchen range, Pax wardrobe, or Billy bookcases. The Besta range is a versatile modular shelf unit designed for customization, featuring a variety of mix and match shelves, doors, drawers, and handles. It is one of my personal favorites, and I've used it in many of my client projects as TV stands and cabinets. I've also seen many people online use them to create very interesting built-ins for various rooms around the home. I think that many people are worried that IKEA products look cheap, but there are actually many companies that offer custom door panels like Sama Handmade, Superfront, and Norse Interiors, which transform these basic pieces into designer pieces. Another option is the Method Kitchen Range, which is similarly versatile. You can build a custom setup with IKEA's kitchen planning software, and there are also heaps of companies that offer custom IKEA cabinet fronts for a higher-end look. You can also make IKEA's Pax wardrobe look built-in by adding trim to the bottom and crown molding on the top. Again, this is another endlessly customizable range that has many doors, lighting, and handles to choose from. The wardrobes also come in many silhouettes from tall to narrow and wide, so they can be used as storage in practically any room. The Billy bookcase is another IKEA staple that is sleek and versatile and can be DIY'd into built-in. Many people add custom molding to the top so it looks like a built-in bookcase. I've seen many people online turn these units into large built-in library walls and other people have installed two units on either side of a window with a bench seat reading nook in the middle. Apart from integrating these products as built-ins, they also work well as freestanding furniture. But as flat pack pieces, they often look boxy and boring, which isn't what you're going for. The key is to add in details, whether there is custom knobs, pulls, or legs, or changing the front panel to something custom, or perhaps adding in details like molding. For the added wow factor, consider integrating built-in lighting to highlight specific details in your built-in. You can use recessed lighting or LED strips like what we did for this bar cabinet in this project. Similarly, when it comes to built-ins, I'm talking about any type of custom woodworking, not just storage units. Things like a bench built into a bay window, a bookshelf that fits perfectly around your windows, or a custom joinery piece that adds storage around your bed, or even a slider screen like we did in the studio apartment are all great options. Have you ever noticed the stark contrast between the molding in high-end residences and builder-grade homes? In upscale properties, you often notice crown and wall moldings, thicker door casings, and grander window trims, while builder-grade homes tend to have minimal and understated wall details. These details are one of the most overlooked parts that makes a big impact. 
adding a level of character and luxury. But it is also important to point out that not every style or home needs this. For example, there's rarely crown molding in mid-century style homes and you probably don't need to add one if that is the style you're going for. There are many different types of moldings. Some of the most common ones are skirtings, also known as baseboards, which are installed at the bottom of the walls to transition and blend the bottom of the wall with the floor and protect the wall from damage. Architraves, also known as door or window casings, are decorative moldings installed around door and window frames to hide the joints and to add visual interest to a room. And crown molding, which is installed between walls or cabinets and ceilings. If your house already has them but they look bland and boring, you can also consider painting it another color for added visual interest. Another one is chair rail, which is installed above wainscoting, usually as the end cap, but they can also be installed without wainscoting. To avoid confusion, wainscoting is a type of wall paneling that is installed on the lower halves of walls, and there are many different types to choose from. Paneling, on the other hand, is a broad term that includes everything from picture frame molding, tongue and groove, vertical wood slats, ship laps, and many more. All of this can add texture and visual interest to a space which a lot of new builds are lacking. There's so many styles to choose from, so go ahead and experiment with them. There's even ready-made options that you can get from Home Depot or your local hardware store. The only thing I'd advise is to not recreate features where they don't belong. Instead of creating a tribute to a period building or following the latest trend on TikTok, add character in a way that feels appropriate. Check out my video on Timeless Home and why trends should not matter if you want to learn more about this. If you want to make your ceilings more ornate, I'll suggest ceiling medallions which are circular accents that are placed around light fixtures or ceiling fans. They draw the eye upward and ground light fixtures much like how rugs ground furniture. Ceiling medallions can range from anything intricately detailed to stunningly simple so they blend into many different architectural home styles from traditional to contemporary. Overall, I find that they are a really impactful way to infuse personality, a sense of grandeur and charm into a home. Just make sure you get one that is appropriate for the style of the home. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out this video on timeless decorating and how to create a magazine-worthy home on a budget. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.